colleagues and esteemed scientists, if you're interested in new and enabling nanotechnologies, this is the webinar for you. Welcome to the Bruker Nanosurfaces webinar where, we're, where we will provide an overview of an exciting measurement technology to realize routine nanoscale electrochemical measurements. The technology is a nanoelectrode manufactured in large volumes with Bruker novel fabrication technologies. The product is PeakForce SECM, AFM Scanning Electrochemical Microscopy. During this webinar, I encourage you to use the questions window on the webinar user interface to submit your questions for discussion and at the QA session we will address them uh, immediately after the technology overview. The recording and presentation material will be made available to you after the webinar through a follow-up email where you can download it via a link. And I also encourage you to fill out the survey at the end of the webinar to help us improve our webinar sessions. My name is Hector Lara, Product Line Manager for Dimension IFM Products at Bruker. Presenting the technology overview is Teddy Kwan, Senior Application Scientist at Bruker's AFM Unit. Teddy obtained his PhD degree in Physical Chemistry from Emory University in 2012. After graduation, Dr. Huang worked with Professor Nathan Lewis at Caltech as postdoctoral scholar where he investigated the semiconductor metal interfacial structure using AFM nanoelectric measurements. He joined Bruker in 2014 and now leads a team for development of AFM-based electrical and electrochemical applications. As of today, he has published 40 peer-reviewed articles with more than 1,700 citations and having a Herfindahl index of 18. We are very pleased to have Dr. Huang in our technology team. Dr. Huang, if you would please proceed with the AFM SCCM technology overview. Thanks, Hector, for the introduction, and thank you all for attending this webinar. Today, I'm very happy to introduce a new electrochemical mode for Bruker AFM, the Peak Force Scanning Electrochemical Microscopy, an AFM-based SECM mode with Peak Force tapping. For this webinar, I'll start with the motivation of this product. Then I will talk about the equipment and application examples, including nanoelectrics measurement in liquid. Electrochemistry has many applications, such as energy-driven research, biological systems, materials development, and surface protection. So on the right are two examples and I will talk about the bottom one later. The top one is the surface ebullition of a silicon anode during voltage cycling in a lithium ion battery system. As you can see in this example, battery electrochemistry alters the surface topography, cause mechanical failure, change the electrical conductivity, and which in turn altogether affect the electrochemical performance. In addition, the developed cracking features as shown at the corner are less than 100 nanometer. So if you want to investigate such a system, it requires first in situ local electrochemical studies with a special resolution of less than 100 nanometer. And second, it requires methods that can simultaneously provide morphology, mechanics, and conductivity in addition to electrochemistry. As you can see later, PICFORCE SECM nicely meets this research need. Now, let's take a look at the classic SECM first. In a classic scanning electrochemical microscopy, an ultra microelectrode serves as a, prob a probing tip. And this tip, scanning, uh, this tip scans across the sample surface. The sample area underneath the tip perturbs the electrochemistry at the tip. By capturing the tip response to the electrochemical perturbation from the sample underneath, the properties variation across the sample surface is imaged. Obviously, as you can see from this image, the electrochemical resolution is primarily determined by the tip dimension and the tip sample distance. This figure shows some typical information that can be extracted from a classic scanning electrochemical microscopy. This includes 
differentiation of active site from the electrode surface, understanding the diffusive transport of different species in solution, imaging surface topography, the, investiga the investigation of membrane permeability, and ion channels, for example, in biological samples like proteins. In the SECM, the ultramicroelectrode has a steady state diffusion limit current due to this conversion diffusion process. Its amplitude, of course, depends on how fast the chemical species can diffuse from the bulk solution to the electrode surface. When the tip is approaching to an insulator, the diffusion will be blocked. This leads to the decrease of tip current, and as so, on this uh, approach curve, which plot the tip current as the tip sample distance. While on the surface, for example, like a conductor that buys as a right potentials, on this surface that allows fast regeneration reaction, the approach curve will show a positive feedback due to these regeneration reactions. If, for a sample, not so active, or uh, with a slower re surface reaction rate, the approach curve from that surface will fall between these two plots. Its shape and its position depend on the surface reaction rate. Here is an example of a set of approach curves with buried interfacial charge transfer rate. Experimentally, by collecting and studying such a set of approach curves, one can quantify the interfacial charge transfer dynamics. Classes SECM typically use an ultramicroelectrode. This generally limits the spatial resolution to only micrometer. It has two typical imaging modes. One is scanning a tip at a constant height for electrochemical mapping. The other is scanning the tip with a constant current as a feedback signal, as a feedback set point for imaging the surface topography. However, as shown on the approach curve here, the tip current is a function of both sample activity and also a function of the tip sample distance. Then, in this regard, both these two modes have the issue of signal convolution and only convoluted topography and easy information can be achieved for a general sample. All these all this limitations, such as low resolution, signal convolution, can be well adjusted in AFM-based SECM. SECM based on AFM generally use nanoelectrodes. These nanoelectrodes normally have a characteristic dimension of submicrometer, uh, sub or even less than 100 nanometer, as shown on this image here. In AFM SECM, the interleaved scanning mode is frequently used, and this mode is used to decouple electrochemistry from other AFM uh, information, like decouple electrochemistry from the surface topography. In this mode, in the main scan, topography and other AFM information are captured and in the lift scan, the tip follows the surface topography but at a defined lift height from the sample surface. During the lift scan, electrochemical information is captured. AFM SECM can also combine with the most advantageous imaging mode, the peak force tapping, and this is the peak force SECM that we are talking about today. So what is peak force tapping? Peak force tapping modulates the probe and of resonance low frequency, such as 1 to 2 kilohertz. It has many advantages, such as stable, ultra-low imaging force benefits high-resolution imaging. It makes AFM very friendly to users. For example, no cantilever tuning required, and this is very convenient for liquid imaging. It has automatic image op optimization and this, this function frees AFM users from the tedious efforts on adjusting feedback parameters, parameters and which is very 
difficult for a lot of new users to AFM. And so on the right is an example of PIC4 tapping. And this is a DNA helical structure observed by PIC4 tapping in liquid at an imaging force, as you can see here, 49 piconewtons. On this image, we can see the double banded corrugation of DNA and the inset, so it's the high resolution. Uh, so, so the high resolution segment, and on this inset, we can see the major and minor growth of a DNA. Pick force tapping during the imaging, it indeed performs a force curve at every tapping cycle. From this real time force curve, it can uh, it can simultaneously map the quantitative nanomechanical properties. In addition, during each tapping cycle. The duration for tip sample contact is about 100 microseconds. A circuit with a bandwidth of, of about 10 to 20 kilohertz is fast enough to allow pick four tapping simultaneously perform the nanoelectrics measurement. Electrochemical AFM with pick four tapping has also been used for many applications. In pick four EC AFM, the AFM performs peak force imaging on a working electrochemical system. There are also a built-in heater and temperature control system that allows ambient to 65 degrees Celsius. The electrochemical cell is designed to be compatible with a wide range of electrochemical environments. During the imaging, the cell closes up upon tip engaging, and this design is especially for volatile solvent and other and uh, volatile solvents and additive. For sample that are sensitive to air and water, we integrate our AFMs with Grabox technique. This Grabox provides non-reactive environment of less than one ppm moisture and oxygen content. Showing here is an example of peak force. ECAFM in glass box. I indeed have showed you this example at the very beginning. This is an in situ and in operational studies in the glass box. It is about the failure mechanism of solid electrolyte interfaces on silicon anode in a lithium ion battery systems. I'm not going to talk about the detail here, but you can find them in this article that was just accepted last week. Different from ECAFM, in peak force SECM, the nanoelectrode probe is also part of the electrochemical system. In addition to topography, mechanics, electrochemistry, peak force SECM also capture the conductivity information. In peak force SECM, both the probe and the sample are working electrodes. They are generally biased at different potentials for different reactions, for example, reduction and oxidation. When the tap in contact with a conductive substrate during the peak four tapping cycle, contact current will flow due to the increased effective electro area or the voltage different here. This contact current is captured by the by the by potential set. And process into a conductivity uh, into a conductivity map. Here shows the SECM probe. The pre-mounted nanoelectrode probe is shown here. It is encapsulated in glass, sealed with chemical resistant epoxy that is, that is compatible with a wide range of electrochemical environment. The probe, as you can see from this this picture, was designed to have a relative large size. For ease of handling, the tip apex has a platinum coated area with the end tip diameter of about 50 nanometer. The height of this active nanoelectrode is about 200 nanometer. Other than this active region, the probe is fully sealed by silicon dioxide. And as you can see from uh, this SECM images, with this design and the packaging, electrochemical current or electrical current will flow only through the tip apex, no leakage elsewhere 
through the tip and the tip mount. You will see some example later. These are the cyclobotamogram of a nano electrode probe. First, the S shape of these CV cycles and the about 200 picoam diffusion limited current are expected for such a nano electrode at these solution conditions. The negligible background current at this scan rate confirms a high quality insulating coating. The probe design is robust for handling and electrochemical testing. These two CV cycles are indeed a comparison between and after multiple handling and electrochemical tests, as you can see here, including for rings and dry cycles and, and a lot of uh, EC tests, electrochemical tests. And as you can see from these two uh, plots, no degradation on the performance at all. It's another stability test. And this is a 50 CV cycles, and they are plotted into a current time fashion. Again, no degradation on performance was observed. And indeed, our probe passed over 10 hours of electrochemical testing and multiple reuse cleaning cycles. The simulation here is based on a typical geometry of our nano electrode. The result shows a highly localized diffusion layer, as you can see from this contour plot. Um, for example, um, for this highly localized diffusion layer, for example, the ruthenium 3 plus concentration has already recovered 60% at about 50 nanometer away from the surface. This highly localized diffusion layer guarantee the high spatial sensitivity in electrochemical imaging. Here shows the key components of the PIC4 SECM setup. The pre-mounted probe is loaded on the special SECM tip holder, and the boot here is used to cover the electrochemical cells. The probe, as you can see here, is connected to a module. This module has built-in electronics for electrical protection and performance improvement. This module also avoids the direct connection of any clip to the probe. This is to avoid some unnecessary noises caused by the connection uh, with the clip that directly to the probe here. The software, this user interface includes all the PIC4 SECM components, topography, mechanics, conductivity captured during the main scan, electrochemistry captured during the lift scan, real-time force curve, and of course, interleaf scanning mode control. It is also allow, it also allows the integration of the electrochemical data with other AFM channels. For example, as shown here, one can correlate the AFM information, here is the surface height, on every scan line with the electrochemical data here. To confirm the tip current is indeed from the tip apex, a post curve are normally captured before SECM imaging. And these are, are the experimental curve. And as you can see, these curves show behaviors consistent with our simulations. And uh, if you look at the curve more carefully, this curve also shows that the changes in current are mostly occur within the 150 nanometer in tip sample distance. And this high spatial sensitivity is important for high resolution electrochemical imaging. I mean, indeed, this kind of change is also consistent from uh, consistent with the highly localized diffusion layer as shown in the pre previous slide. When capturing a post curve repeatedly, the tip current from continuously ramping by the AFM is also shown on the bipotential software. And this stable and reproducible patterns also confirm the mechanical and electrical sta electrochemical stability of this probe. Here is an example about how peak force SECM captures electrochemical and conductivity information. This is a gold sample 
with silicon nitride pattern on the top. As shown, be as shown before, peak pool tapping is an intermittent contact mode, and during every tapping cycle, it has about 100 microsecond contact duration. When the tip is in contact with the gold surface, the part, um, um, uh, that will be a contact current. By imaging this contact current, one can differentiate the, conduct the conductive gold surface from the insulating nitride region. We also capture the approach curves on both the gold and the nitride surface. When the tip is on the gold surface, the positive, the positive feedback resulting from the surface regeneration reaction increases the tip current, as you can see here. Where on the nitride surface, the blocking effect, which is the negative feedback, reduces the tip current. This difference in electrochemical response is clearly shown on the tip current image captured in the lift scan. This is essentially differentiating materials with different electrochemical activities. On this image, it also clearly resolves a feature, a, cycle, a circle here of about 500 nanometer. And this sub-micrometer resolution can only be achieved with a nano electro probe. The lift height used here for the imaging is 100 nanometer at this lift height. The current difference between the gold and the nitride is about 100 picoM. And this is consistent with the results on the approach curve. As shown here from the approach curve, when the tip is about 100 nanometer away from the sample surface, the current difference, the delta I here, between these two curves is about 100 picoM. To correlate electrochemistry with surface topography, we compare the line profile of these two images at the same location. The right curve here showing the electro uh, the, the tip current and the dashed line here shows the surface topography. As you can see from these figures, the variation in electrochemical current nicely checks the surface topography. The current over the nitride is about 90 picoM lower than that on the gold surface. Although the nitride surface is topographically 50 nanometer higher than the gold substrate. And this 90 picoM difference in current is also consistent with that shown on the approach curve here. Now let's move to the applications. Peak for SECM has been applied to a variety of applications as listed here. I will go over them one by one, but I can only do that briefly because the time limit. If you are interested, interested in the details of any an application examples, please let us know after a webinar and we will follow up with you. Let's start from the nano electro itself. Making a low bath reliable nano electro with high consistency from one batch to another is non-trivial. It's actually a big challenge. And today, we are giving you a commercial solution Regardless of the SECM, the nano electro has already enabled many applications by its own. The main benefit for using a nano electro in electrochemical analysis are listed here. I'm not going to go over the detail here as they are not the main topic today. But if you are interested in these topics, the recent article by Dr. Truman is a great reference. For SECM, a steady state diffusion limit current, the rapid electrochemical response on the tip, and the low dimension of the probe are the most important premises for high resolution electrochemical imaging. And by design, for the probe, the free insulated design with only the very tip apex exposed is very good for nano electric measurement in liquid as one does not need to worry about straight capacitances and parasitic current in solution due to some, some impurity electrochemical reaction. For applications of SECM, here is a nano mesh electrode. Nano mesh is a type of unique transparent conducting electrodes. They are very important in many optoelectronics and photoelectrochemical devices. Understanding the electrochemistry at a nano scale on these electrodes 
is crucial for the design of these electrodes in practical de devices. The electrode here is a gold mesh on a silicon dioxide substrate prepared from nano sphere lithography. The period of the pattern is one micron. The size of the hold is 750 nanometer. Then the size of the grid of the gold grid feature as shown here is about 250 nanometer. As shown on the right, the electrochemical image clearly resolves the important features of these electrodes. For example, the exposed oxide structure, the exposed oxide structure area inside the hole. The uh, 250 nanometer gold grid features, as you can see here, and the contaminated spot on, gold, on the gold mesh. For example, this big dot, and this one, and also this small one. And here is a cross-sectional analysis at the same location for the topography and the electrochemistry. And as you can see from this comparison, the tracking of the current over the sample topography is really tight. And by comparing the, uh, uh, the tracking at the edge, we can say that uh, P4S ECM can resolve sub-100 nanometer resolution at this edge, at these edges. One of the unique capabilities of SECM is to study the electrochemistry as a function of the tip sample distance. This, is, takes the, uh, this takes the advantages of precise control on the tip sample distance and on the leaf height by the FM. For example, approach curve indeed indicate the structure of the diffusion layer on the electro probe. Only when the diffusion layer overlaps with the substrate one can see the electrochemical response on the tip. For example, for our probe, as I mentioned, you will only see uh, you will only see the uh, the main response within 150 nanometer. This is because the highly localized diffusion layer. Similarly, if you're doing the uh, the surface reaction and use the tip to probe the reaction, understanding the structure of the diffusion layer on the electro under test is also critical for the practical design of many devices, such as nano electro array sensors. The nano mesh is used as an example. Here we conducted sample generation and tip collection. Images of the tip current at different leaf height across the sample surface line over a whole feature are shown here. And as shown on this collection of the image, the current contrast decreases with increased leaf height, and the contrast will come back when you decrease uh, when you decrease the, uh, the the tip sample distance again. And this can be better seen from the comparison of the line plot here uh, compared to the surface topography. And as you can see, at 400 nanometer, there's no current contrast, and it's almost a flat line here. So when 400 nanometer away from the sample surface. It pretty much the, gen the, the generated ruthenium 2 plus concentration is specially homogeneous in solution. Nano electro array is another example, and this nano electro array are integrated sensor system widely used in bioelectro analysis. They are also model systems for fundamental studies in nanoparticle catalysis. To study such a uh, system, you require an analytic tool with a high special electrochemical resolution that can resolve, that has a resolving power at a single nanoparticle level. And this is a narrow electro array prepared from elect electron beam lithography. It has active particles with diameters of 100 nanometer and the periods of these particles are 300 nanometer. This sample is very interesting, so it's in homogeneous reactivity across the sample surface. Some rhesium are highly active, while others have small response. Both the main scan, both the main scan for conductivity and this scan for the electrochemistry, both of them differentiate the active particles from the non-reactive rhesium. 
And here is the cross-sectional analysis of the electrochemical signal from the lip scan and the surface top topography from the main scan. And we compare them actually on the same location as indicated by this dashed line here. And from the comparison here, we can see that p 4 SECM can really resolve sub-100 nanometer features on the elect electrochemical channel. As mentioned previously, as ECM is a unique tool to quantify the interfacial charge transfer dynamics through the approach curves. Here it's a nitride pattern covered on a platinum substrate. <coughs> the exposed platinum grid region has inhomogeneous conductivity as shown on the uh, as shown on the main scan here, and correspondingly it also has inhomogeneous electrochemical activities. From this sample, we can obtain the approach curves and location with different activities. And as shown on the right, on nitride, we have a very typical current reduction approach curve due to the blocking effect. On platinum, the positive feedback leads to the current enhancement. And this current enhancement competes with the blocking effect as the surface activity increases less and less current reduction is observed. On a conductive spot, we can even see both the, uh, we can see both the increased tip current and even the contact current. Self-assembled monolayer, they find applications in many areas. As shown here, an ideal self-assembled monolayer should have desired properties desired properties such as topographic homogeneity, controlled conductivity, stable chemistry, and tailorable electrochemistry. p 4 SECM is well suited for, 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 for study of these samples by simultaneously providing multidimensional information. And this is uh, the example. This SAM sample is on a gold substrate. And as you can see from the topography image, the surface height has variation about one nanometer, and one almost cannot see the SAM features. With pick force SECM, the donor-shaped SAM structure and its defect can be clearly differentiated from the gold substrate. And this is so on this quantitative adhesion map. And um, and the, uh, on the same, um, the, uh, the other fusion force has about one nanonewton difference from that on the gold surface. By this, by this self-assembled model layer, it, this layer, um, this layer acts as a non-ideal insulator, and with this, with such an insulator, it will lead to a reduced interfacial charge transfer rate. So, correspondingly, on the donor area. Uh, we can see that the tip for a daily current is reduced by 110 picoM compared to the tip current when it scans over the gold surface. HOPG is a very important electro material for a number of applications. Understanding the electrochemistry at the basal plants, the step edges, and surface defects is very important. In fact, SECM study of HOPG never fades. However, conventionally, researchers can only achieve either topographic or electrochemical information. And this limitation is removed by PICFOR's SECM. Here is an example of a surface defect on a HOPG electrode studied by PICFOR's SECM. This submicron defect area is about 0.4 nanometer higher than the surrounding terrace. On this defect area, the tip current is about 55% or about 10% less than the basal less than the basal area as so shown on this line profile. In addition, the electrochemical map here also shows slightly enhanced tip current at the step edges. And interestingly, from the mechanical map, 
we can see that this region is softer, has a lower modulus. And from the adhesion map, we found that it has about 4 nanonewton less adhesive to the tip than the HOPG basal plants. Nanoparticle catalysis, they have many applications. And for nanoparticles um, and in catalysis, I mean the, sp the spatial inhomogeneity of the particle properties is critical for their performance as an ensemble on an electrode. In addition, electrolyte solution will impact the catalytic performance. So in situ, local and high resolution study on the single particle level is highly desired. Here is an example that I showed in the beginning. The particle here typically has a size of about 100 nanometers. In liquid, this particle only loosely attached to the electrode. Because of this loose atta attachment, it requires an extremely gentle and stable imaging force. Such a requirement can be easily met by peak force tapping mode in liquid. The contact current in the main scan shows the in interfacial conductivity of these particles. And as you can see from this particle, even the interface is not mechanically robust. It still carries a very high current density. However, the conductivity from one particle to another is very different. In the lift scan, the tip current reflects the reactivity of the nanoparticles, comparing both the conductivity and the electrochemical activity, we can see that particle 1 and 2 have very similar behaviors. For particle 3 and 4, there is a great difference in interfacial conductivity. However, they have similar electrochemical activities. As I mentioned previously, the SECM probe by design is also suitable for nanoelectrics measurement in liquid. And in this section, in this last section, I will show you two examples. For conductivity measurement, as I mentioned, it can be done by potential step. Although the by potential step can be used, it is much more convenient to use the PIC4, the PF tuner application module, which is the PIC4 tunneling AFM. This module has a much higher bandwidth than a bipotential step. It also has a low noise amplifier that next to the probe, uh, very close to the, uh, to the narrow electrode, and it has many advanced software features. It can capture the current at a peak force. The current averages over the contact duration, and also the current averages over the whole tapping cycle at the same time. HOPG has an assault and an uh, anisotropic elect electrical conduction when where the lateral charge transport is much faster than in local measurement the edge the edges should show much higher current. However, this really depends on the local configuration. For example, this armchair configuration has stabilized edges and will even show a lower current than the basal plan. We use the SECM probe with the PF tuner module to image an HOPG surface in water. The step edges here are generally about one nanometer or less in height. From the current map capturing liquid, we can observe an isotropic conduction similar to that measuring air. The line profile are compared. The line profile here compare the conductivity at the edges and on the basal plane. This edges only has about one nanometer in step high, but ten times higher, uh, but ten times more conductive than the terrace. The point and shoot captures of ivory curves at different locations as labeled on this map. And this curve also confirms the conductivity and isotropy. And it's very interesting. <clears throat> From those curves, we can see that the probe can stably carry contact current more than half microamp. And consider the 
the surface areas of this nano electrode, and this is really a, a high current density. In, as, in, in a typical SECM, it generally, uh, in a typical SECM application, it generally requires only few or sub nano amp current. So, for our probe, there's no limitations when application requires high currents, for example, in catalysis and corrosion research. Correct junction behaviors are critical for devices with metal semiconductor contact. And it is well known that electrolyte solution will impact the in interfacial energetics at a junction. Then understanding these junctions in solution has lots of practical significance. Here is a study about the behavior of semiconductor metal junctions in liquid. This is a gold nanoelectro array patterned on a semiconductor surface, and this sample was prepared by electron beam lithography. In liquid, the sealed probe allows minimizing and decoupling background signals from the contact from the contact current at the gold particles, as shown this as shown by this bright dot here. From the IV curve, in air, this junction, this Gold semiconductor junction shows a typical dial-like rectifying behavior, as so by this uh, curve here. However, when in liquid, the IV curve changes to something more ohmic. And to better understanding uh, the current source, we also put the tip, uh, make the tip land it on the oxide region. And from the oxide region in liquids, it actually shows negligible current. So this, so from so the signal on this curve, they are real contact current instead of parasitic background signal from impurity reactions. So in summary, we have successfully fabricated high quality nano electro probe, and we have developed peak force SECM mode. This is a complete commercial solution for simultaneously capturing multidimensional FM information in addition to electrochemical image with less than 100 nanometer resolution. The nano electro probe also provides capability for high quality nano electrics measurement in liquid. All these features were developed to meet the needs highly multidisciplinary uh, research today. Finally, I would like to acknowledge this group of brilliant professors, scholars, and researchers with a variety of academia backgrounds. I have six slides in this webinar talking about data from Professor Papastabo lab at University of Bailoy, and some of the sample was prepared from Professor Ratchet's lab. Andres Marx, Sebastian Gottrich and Kristen Staring, they are all very clever graduate students. Caltech, where I, where I intensively got trained on both electrochemistry and AFM during my postdoc, and indeed acquired big help from both Dr. Xiang and Dr. Brunchwick at that time. Thanks to all these old friends uh, and mentors and, and mentors for their general guidance and discussion during our product development. Katie has done all the simulations show on this on this presentation, and Jingjing helped me with some samples. Professor Vultures from University of Oregon helps us in the nano electro arrays and the nano electric measurement in liquids. Michael Nellis, a very smart student, has fabricated a big series of samples for this collaboration, and he and I were together uh, collect, uh, collecting some samples right here in Santa Barbara. Professor Wally from University of Leeds, uh, his students, Dr. Lee and Dr. Martin, from, uh, has been providing us many helpful feedback and advice for product development. And the battery, the battery data was captured by Professor Sheldon's student from Brown University, um, Ravi Kumar and Dr. Uh, Tok Reynolds. And this battery project is also a collaboration with Dr. Xiao from GM we now are working together using our peak force as ECM in, in, the, in battery systems. And thank you for your 
attention, and I'm very happy to take any questions you might have. Very good, Dr. Juan. I think we do have uh, a few questions, and uh, I just want to address the audience and uh, thank you for your questions, and we, we will try to uh, address all of them in the given time. If we cannot get to all of them, we will certainly follow up with you directly and answer your questions. So let's go to the first one. Uh, is it also possible to obtain electrochemical data during tapping? And the way I understand it, you fix the tip sample distance using lift mode and sequentially map topography and EC data. Is that correct? Yes. Okay, so that is in tapping mode. Okay, so the answer to that is yes. Uh, the next question, is it possible? Uh, sorry, what's the, what the question? Let's back up. Is it also possible to obtain electrochemical data during tapping? Uh, okay. Uh, uh, yes or no? Okay, so um, um, the answer, uh, so this is actually talking about a single pass or dual pass um, imaging. So it's, it's possible that you capture the electrochemical uh, signal during the tapping because they, 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 uh, they, as you can see, the electrochemistry is controlled by the bipotential step. It's always there, but the signal you are going to capture uh, is a tapping cycle average signal, or a, a signal that uh, a, a signal that averages uh, by the uh, uh, by the potential state which has a low bandwidth. Okay, so the electrochemistry is always there, and indeed, um, indeed, um, um, if your sample is not very conductive, and then you don't need to worry about the contact current, and then the signal you are capturing is is the electrochemical signal, except it's an averaging signal. On the same uh, subject, um, another listener asks. Uh, during the lift phase, the peak force excitation is turned off. Is that correct? Yes. So the tip is is not uh, the tip does not oscillate. It only follows the surface profile. Okay. Very good. Uh, next question: Is it possible to measure the electrical conductivity of soft nanofibers made by conductive polymers in liquid? Uh, the diameter of these nanofibers are around 100 nanometers, young, Young's modulus of 50 kilopascals, and the condition is less than 0.1 second per centimeter. And this would be in water or buffers. Oh, okay, so so this is actually not a simple question. So um, is, the, is the substrate conductive? Does the uh, li listener mean? So it is uh, conductive, uh, soft nanofibers in liquid. No, I mean the substrate. The oh, the substrate. No, they don't mention their substrate. I so okay. So the contact current. I actually mentioned that briefly during my presentation. The contact current coming from two things. One, it is the contact current is because the tip and the sample of different bias, and it is because when the tip in contact with a conductive substrate, it will effectively increase the uh, uh, the the electrical area. Of course, if your substrate is more conductive, has a bigger area, it will. Uh, it, it will be like a source of higher current. So it is possible that even your your sample is not on a conductive substrate. This is number one. And number two, talking about the uh, uh, the 50 kilopascal uh, modulus uh, using this probe, it's, um, uh, I need to check actually. So it might be a little bit challenging because the uh, uh, the the spring constant for this probe is about one nanonewton per meter. So it will not be so straightforward with such a sharp sample. So but I, I believe it's, it's doable after some efforts. So, yeah, I think okay. it's better to follow up with this question uh, after the webinar. We will certainly follow up with that. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Wang. Uh, now, uh, there's another one. Your example with self-assembled monolayer showed a gradual color change around the border with a width of approximately 200 nanometers at the edge of the ring. Is this spatial resolution in this case? And if so, what controls that resolution? The resolution controls by several things. Um, so, of course, the, uh, uh, and as what I showed you, right, from the from the simulation, we can see that the um, uh, the diffusion layer is is quite compact, and by and in theory, we should get get a really high resolution, uh, even less than 100 nanometer. But uh, it also depends on your lift height, and it also as I, and later on, we found that is uh, there's a, a, another issue is actually coming from the bandwidth of the uh, potential step. If the potential step is not fast enough, it has a slow rising or slow uh, slow decreasing. Um, I mean, if the bandwidth is high enough, 
and then you, of, of course it will cause some signal delay and it will show the a lower uh, it will show a lower um, a, a lower resolution and also the data averaging from the potential depth is also an issue and for this uh, for for this same sample and then I, uh, the scan size is quite big and then you would consider the data acquisition by the potentials that you will show this kind of like 200 uh, like a few hundred nanometer resolution and then you, you scan uh, you would do a, a slower scan uh, a, a slower scan and with a smaller scan size you will see a much higher resolution and and I believe this actually this data from Dr. Papaslavo lab and then I, uh, I believe uh, they're also doing some simulation and compare the theoretical simulation with the experimental data at this moment. And I believe uh, the data will coming up, uh, uh, they will submit a paper version. Okay, very good. Uh, let's uh, go. Uh, some uh, folks in the audience would like to know if it's possible to map the surface potential. Uh, yes, um, that's something that we are really working on right now. So I mean the idea is actually very straightforward. All we need just put the uh, between the your between this probe and with the um, between your probe and your sample and then put a bulk meter there. I mean the the the, the idea is quite straightforward. About doing this kind of potential measurement, um, it it does have some requirement for the hardware. Of course, first you need a sealed probe. Uh, you you need a sealed sealed probe for local uh, for local measurement, and we already have that. And the second one is the requirement for your bulk meter. And today, a lot of potential set has some limitation because uh, if you do an estimation, uh, even you have a leakage count of one pico, one pico m, uh, 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 yeah, about one pico m, it already has a very high current density. So it requires um, uh, uh, imp input impedance about at least 10 to the 14 um, ohm. So that's something that you uh, that you need uh, to set up the uh, potential measurement. Okay, thank you, Dr. Wang. Uh, the next question is, does the electrochemical module and bipotential stat have peak force tuna capabilities? If not, what current channel does it map in contact? Is it possible to combine them? Okay. I can repeat it again. Yeah. Does the electrochemical module and bipotential stat have PF tuna capabilities? No, because the bandwidth is not high enough. Okay. Uh, I think that uh, addresses. Uh, so basically, they're they're following up by saying, if not, what current channel does it map in contact? So it actually maps the contact current. So because when the tip and the conductive structure in contact, it will have the contact current, and the contact current is normally much higher. Uh, of course, it depends on the conductivity of the sample. For example, for a conductor, it will be very high. And then the uh, the potentials that just average the uh, whatever signal that they can capture with their bandwidth or their data averaging, and then with this signal, of course, we route it to the to the uh, to our to our AFM, and then we process into an image. I mean, this is actually a very interesting question. I mean, yeah, uh, I mean the pro yeah, uh, it is right that the potentials that doesn't have the capability, but on the other hand, our peak for tuner has the capability to do a much better uh, electrical measurement and in principle, also the electrochemical measurement, if you can set up the right electronics, and that's something that we are we are actually really working on that right now. Very good. Uh, next question: uh, Does the different current at step on the HOPG relate to different tip contact at the edge, as it is well known with using usual conductive AFM work? I can repeat it. Does the different current at this step on HOPG relate to the different tip contact at the edge as it is well known in typical conductive AFM? Well, i still not very clear with the question, but um, if you, so I actually uh, put the reference there, and the reference is very interesting about uh, the, uh, the uh, uh, conduction and the in air, and talking about different kind of like a uh, edge configuration and then which will result in what kind of conductivity and then uh, it'd be interest, interesting that you should go take a look. And then uh, the example here, what I'm showing, I'm just trying to do that in the liquid. I want to show that I can get the conduction current without the interference from the uh, from the background current. And then I think uh, this question also related, could it be possible that the current at C at the edge, is that because the side effect of the tip because of the, of course, the edge is higher, and then you, 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 the, it, it's possible that your tip coin, the side, the side of tip coin that contact the uh, uh, the edge instead of the uh, 
of the vertical band. But considering that the step height from the topography is only about like a half nanometer or even less, and I don't I don't think the side uh, the the, uh, the the side effect from the tip is a problem. So that's a real kind of, that's a real uh, conduction and endoscopy. I'm not sure if I answered the question because I I don't quite understand the question. I think uh, that addresses most of it, if not some. But I think uh, this is uh, something that we'll follow up with uh, uh, with uh, this uh, the attendee and follow up with a clearer answer, if necessary. Uh, now the next question is between the tip and the surface under investigation, can there be a substance such as a living cell? Um, well, as I mentioned, the material is platinum. So you can do uh, any electron modification, surface modification, as long as they can interact with platinum. And it's possible that between the sample and the tip, you have something there. I mean, for SECM, it's, all, I mean, it's, it's very popular that people push some uh, electron shot, uh, shot over that in between, and it actually depends on what's the function of your cell and what what they want. And of course, how how big they are. Of course, for AFM, they normally can only do like a, a 10 micron or 5 micron. Uh, 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 well, uh, um, well, that's not true. Anyway, it depends what what kind of application you want. Actually, you you always can put something between the substrate and the uh, and and the tip. It just depends on the real applications. Yeah. Uh, there's a general question. Is there any corrosion protection? Uh, that's the question I imagine they they are talking about uh, all the elements that are submerged in the solvents or in the uh, in the solution. Is there any corrosion protection? Um, so, well, um, so this is actually how to define a corrosion because of course, as I mentioned, the uh, uh, the material for the tip for the probe holder and the uh, okay, so the probe holder and then and and then the the book cover uh, are pretty much just uh, some Teflon material, some KLF, KLRAS, and the tip, as I mentioned, that glass, um, um, that glass, and then the coating uh, uh, are silicon dioxide and then uh, the platinum and the epoxy is very stable. Uh, they should uh, they should be stable for many of the uh, um, for for uh, uh, should be stable in many electrochemical environment and. I'm not sure if that count as the corrosion protection that the uh, uh, the listener is asking, but all I can say that we consider the uh, different electrochemical environment when we're developing uh, this product. Uh, very good. Um, and we'll take one last question because we're right a little bit one minute past 9 a.m. Uh, is there high-speed data capture mode for EC operation as it is in normal peak force tapping? Oh, okay. So. Again, this is a very interesting uh, question. Yeah, because now everyone want to do fast electrochemistry. So we are all I can say that we are we are we are working on that because it's very interesting during you do the peak four tapping, right? Uh, because the electro uh, the uh, uh, during you doing the uh, the uh, the peak four tapping, the tip is oscillating, and then you you can capture electrochemical data during this kind of tip oscillation. You can uh, essentially capture the uh, a post curve at, a, at each pixel, uh, at, at, at each pixel at the same time. But this really requires you have a high bandwidth, as you require has a very fast electronics. Um, so, um, and uh, we actually uh, we actually had tried some high speed data capturing, of course, uh, using our peak four tuner module, and then uh, we are still working on that. So, yeah, as it possible with our peak four tuner module uh, to do some electrochemistry. Um, but uh, it's still under development. That's all I can say. And that that would be the peak force tuner module with the uh, nano electrode. Yeah. Uh, and in, in solution. Yeah. yeah, that's our solution. Of course, if you have a very fast electro, uh, if you have a very fast potential step, you can also try by yourself. Correct. It depends on how fast you can capture the data. Okay. In respect of everybody's time, I think uh, we're going to end our session here. I do apologize if we didn't get to your questions, but we will certainly follow up, um, you know, with the questions that we didn't address and those that need further follow up or further discussion. Uh, thank you for attending this webinar. We're excited about the technology. Uh, we're seeing great response in, you know, amongst uh, researchers. Uh, please contact us if you need additional information or you want to discuss specific points. Again, thank you for attending.